Hello and welcome. Uh, this video is a follow-up video uh, for the CyberPanel installation. And as I promised, uh, I'm going to show you how we can uh, edit some configs and uh, some tweaks to make your CyberPanel instance uh, more secure. We will take a look also on the firewall inside of the CyberPanel. And uh, also we will uh, create our credentials for a Lightspeed admin interface and do some uh, tweaks there. I already prepared uh, the guide for the CyberPanel deployment where you can uh, follow the video for easy installation. Also, you need to make sure to check the prerequisites in order to install CyberPanel. And uh, I put some terminal commands that I will be using in this video. So you can just uh, click and copy into your terminal. So let's get started. First, we need to log into our CyberPanel instance. Let me check it. Oh yes, for sure, we set up the cyber panel on SSL, so we're gonna go change it to Nostify the Pork. Alright, so we are in our cyber panel now, and first thing uh, what we want to do is to set up the additional firewall, and this is really good because we have our hardware firewall but if that hardware firewall fails we still have our software firewall in cyberpanel which is using uh, firewall d so in order to access firewall you need to go to the security let me make this screen bigger so you can see better go to security go to firewall and here you can see all the firewall ports that we also open in our hardware for the DNS, FTP and uh, email services. You can leave those blank. But first what we want to do is to name our rule. So first we will protect our cyber panel port 8090 on our IP. So we name it cyber panel. You select protocol TCP and you paste uh, our dedicated IP that we deployed from our VPN in the part one in this uh, open source series. And you type port A090. You click add. Once you have this, you want to refresh it and you want to remove this uh, panel port which is accepting all ip addresses so you can just click this x and it will be delete and as you can see our cyber panel port is protected with our ip address another port that we want to protect is a light speed admin interface so we just type lse admin TCP is the same, IP address stays the same from our VPN and we type port 7080 and you click add. Once this is done, we can refresh our firewall and uh, yeah, you can specify if you want to protect any other ports or if you want to only use your IP address to access HTTP or HTTPS. You are free to do it here and also we can limit port ftp to your ip address so basically you go my ftp tcp is the same ip address is the same but you type port 21 and you click add and now you will need to remove this entry that is accepting all ip addresses on the port 21 you click X and you reload the firewall. All right, so now we can uh, set up our interface in the Lightspeed Admin. And uh, in order to do that, first we need to 
we need to create our admin credentials in a terminal. So if you go back to the documentation, you can see Lightspeed admin password. So you copy this uh, command, you move back to your terminal, and you paste the command there and press enter. You want to be more specific, you can uh, use your username. So we're gonna type example. And now you need to add your strong password. I always recommend using strong password even only you can access this administrator interface, just in case. And now we get confirmation that administrator username and password is updated successfully. Now we want to copy this uh, server IP address, which is this one. We navigate back to our browser. I'm gonna copy, paste the IP address and type port 7080 and press enter. You continue, advanced yes, and here we are in our Lightspeed Enterprise admin interface. So we specify our username as example and password that you enter in the terminal. You can uh, ignore this because we don't have our WordPress site here for now. We will edit later. But uh, usually what I doing in Lightspeed Enterprise is uh, when you go to configurations, server, I'm going to edit the general settings. Usually I specify my email address here. You click save. And also you can enable, you can uh, actually check for update. Uh, I usually do it on a weekly basis. And uh, you can set up uh, if you want to use uh, IP header in the clients, you can read more. What does it do? But I use it only with a trusted IP only. When you go to the tuning tab, you can set up some maximum connections. For example, this is really good uh, if you don't have like high traffic website and you want to protect it via, uh, if you want to set up some DDoS protection, so it will throttle the connections to the server. And this is really good because we are not using Cloudflare or any other third party software that can protect your web server. So usually maximum connections uh, 500 is really uh, reasonable. If you don't have high traffic websites, you need to know your traffic. And SSL connections auto 500, you click save. And uh, basically that's all. It is the Lightspeed configuration. Compression GZ Brotly is already enabled, so that's fine. And uh, yeah, you got enabled the uh, quick protocol. It's completely fine. And if you finished editing this, you need to apply changes by gracefully restarting the Lightspeed server. All right. What else can we do here? You can list like the server. Uh, page speed, I don't use it. This is uh, depreciated. And also you can set some, uh, set up some cache policies. If you wanna increase the lifetime, you can do it here or in the HT access or even in the Lightspeed plugin. And in the virtual host, we got nothing. And basically that's it for this. And yeah, if you're gonna run in the future in some issues, you can see 
uh, light speed locks here are also inside the cyber panel. So now we can continue back to our cyber panel. Come back. Yes, I know. All right, we are in our firewall and uh, we can deploy now our first WordPress website. You can deploy it here in the WordPress. You can uh, configure uh, plugins. You can set up some blueprint. You can add your own plugins, but I'm not using this feature to deploy WordPress. I'm usually deploying my WordPress uh, when I go to websites, list websites. You can add more domains here or subdomains uh, with the Lightspeed Enterprise free license. You get only one main domain and you can set up unlimited subdomains of the main domain. So we want to set up WordPress on the main site. So we're going to click manage. Yes, I want to visit it. We still got our SSL from Let's Encrypt. It's perfect. And if you want to deploy WordPress, you go to the bottom and you go application installer, WordPress with LS cache. You name your blog title, test login user, testing user, but don't use those general and unsafe login credentials. Login password, usually generate the password in the password manager. Email example.com and you can leave path to default and you can press install now. Usually this process takes a couple of seconds to finish. It will not deploy SSL because we already have our SSL installed. And now we can visit uh, web, webnstify.org. Slash WP admin. Example user. Did I forget which username I added? Okay, hold on. I need to recreate my username. Okay, so our username was a testing user. Testing user. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. And uh, when we check uh, side held, everything uh, should be fine. Our website is not using HTTPS. Yes, we know. We need to go to the general settings and change it to HTTPS. Click save and we're gonna log in again. In user. I don't want to save. Also, I disabled the reading so. And now when we go back to the side health, everything is running fine. So now we can explore our light speed. Oh. Now we can export our light speed and uh, what's really great with the light speed enterprise that you will get access to the crawler. And what is crawler? Lightspeed crawler, that is uh, integration of the Lightspeed cache plugin that can speed up your website. It will go through website, all URLs, and it will update the cache page to reduce waiting time for your visitors. So, as you can see, you get warning that the crawler feature is not enabled on the Lightspeed server. Please consult your server admin or hosting provider. I have created a guide in the documentation. 
how you can enable the light speed crawler and you can follow along. So first we need to open our configuration file in a light speed. So we're gonna click this command and we're gonna move back our window to the terminal. And uh, you copy the command, they know. And you get a warning to not edit this file directly, but in this case, if you wanna be careful and follow along, there will be no issues. So first we need to find the line if model light speed. You go at the end of the line, you press enter to the new line and you copy the following text that you can find in the documentation. You right click and Another thing that I like to do is to prevent using uh, old uh, TLS versions. I always using TLS 1.3, which is the fastest and the most secure out of the box. So you go to line SSL protocol, you remove everything. And when you go back to the documentation site, you can copy the command that will block all old TLS versions and only allow TLS 1.3 and you paste it. Now when we set up our Kravler and also the TLS, you press Ctrl O to save, enter to confirm and Ctrl X to exit. And you now you can reboot the server to take the configuration or you can gracefully re restart the Lightspeed, uh, Lightspeed service. So in this case, I'm going to perform reboot and we will be back soon. So our server was successfully rebooted and we can go back to the WordPress. And when we refresh the page, see, we got no warning and our crawler is already running. And usually when you finish building your website, you want to add your sitemap to the crawler. So you go to the sitemap settings. You paste the URL of the XML sign up and click save changes. And uh, what it will do, you will see the, the crawler here and it will generate the caches, caches for all those pages that you want to be get crawled. So yeah, I think this is uh, all regarding the cyber panel and tweaks. And uh, if you have any issues with the installation or uh, general questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I, I am always happy to answer your questions and uh, stay tuned for the part three, where we will finally move, where we will install our portainer server. And later in this series, all self-hosted open source applications that we can use in our digital agency. So well, guys, thank you for watching and yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe and all the things to help others find this content and yeah. See you later.